So I really used to love diodes, but I always felt like that feeling was weird. lesson is on all things diodes. Welcome back to another episode of Beauty and the Bolt. If you haven't already, be sure to click that subscribe button so you can get more bad electronics puns all day, or er, day. And don't be afraid of the like button, just saying. All right, so let's jump into it. So to understand how diodes actually work, first we need to know what a semiconductor is. And a semiconductor is exactly what it sounds like. It's a material that is both an insulator and a conductor, depending on the voltage applied across it. Within each diode, there are two types of semiconductors. So there's the side that wants more electrons, and this is called the P side. And then there's the side that has an excess of electrons, and this is called the N side. And so you can see how electricity is more likely to flow from the N side to the P side in only one direction, and not so easily flow in the other direction. So there are two basic states that diodes can be in, forward bias and reverse bias. We'll do forward bias first. So for forward bias, you add a higher amount of voltage to the P side, or the positive side, which is also the side that wants more electrons, and there will naturally be a lower voltage on the N side, the negative side, which wants to give away electrons. And because of this imbalance, it makes sense that the electrons will flow from the N side to the P side, and this is your current flowing one way through the diode. But keep in mind, it takes a certain amount of voltage to make this happen. And that voltage is called the threshold or cut-in voltage. The cut-in voltage of a standard silicone diode is usually around 0.7 volts, but other diodes can be made to vary. So if you flip it around, reverse bias is when you give a higher voltage to the end side or the negative side of the diode, meaning the side that already has a whole bunch of electrons. The extra electrons on the end side want to go to that positive voltage source instead of the P side of the diode, and therefore, current will not flow through your diode. But in reality, because we live here on planet Earth and nothing is perfect, a small amount of current will inevitably leak past the diode and it is proportional to the voltage applied. So you can think of reverse bias diodes kind of like a clog in a pipe, where if you add enough pressure or voltage, the clog will eventually break down and water will flow freely through the pipe or a current will flow through the diode as if it was just a wire. And the voltage that causes that to happen is called the breakdown voltage. Now, some diodes can survive reaching breakdown voltage, but most of them will not. So all this forward and reverse bias stuff can be graphed pretty easily as a relationship between current and voltage. But not arbitrary though. That? Pretty bad. Why did this dye my tongue so much? So basically every diode has the characteristics that we just talked about, but it's worth noting that there are a bunch of different types of diodes. There are most famously LEDs or light emitting diodes, as well as Schottky diodes, Zener diodes, pin diodes, and more. But the only one we're gonna be talking about today other than your regular good old diode is the LED. You've probably heard of LEDs as a longer lasting and more efficient version of incandescent light bulbs, but what actually are they? They're just diodes that emit light when electricity flows through them. And depending how it's made, they can emit different colors or even come in RGB, which is actually just three separate diodes in one casing. Because LEDs still just take the typical threshold voltage to run, they can be perfect for any kinds of small electronics projects. Hopefully this was a fun introduction to diodes. If you're interested in learning more or have questions or want us to do spotlights on any specific kinds of diodes, please let us know in the comments below. As always, I'm gonna tell you to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and check out the links down in our description below. We've got resources for all of our projects as well as our super fabulous merchandise store where you can deck yourself out from head to toe in fabulous Beauty and the Bolt swag. And as a reminder, every dollar spent at that store goes towards our nonprofit, making STEM education more accessible, engaging, and for all. Definitely just flashed a lot of blue tongue in that, but I don't think that, I think that's just gonna be a, like, a gag in this video. Hey everyone, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video, and yes, that was shot a while ago, because you probably noticed my hair got longer. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to tell you all about our new holiday fundraiser. We released a 2020 Princesses with Power Tools calendar. And in case you missed it, Beauty and the Bolt is actually a 501c3 national nonprofit organization, and our mission is to lower the barrier to entry for girls and minorities in engineering, making, and the trades. And one of our most popular programs is our Princesses with Power Tools program. If you follow us on social media, you may have seen 
seen that our volunteer princesses have taught nearly 5,000 kids how to use their first power tool, and more than half of those were girls. This calendar features 12 incredible women in STEM, ranging from marine biologists to Arctic, Arctic climate change researchers to human rights statisticians and tradeswomen. We have two mechanics featured in the calendar, as well as so many more inspiring and awesome careers that honestly, like, I wish I knew about when I was in elementary school. Not only that, but on our website, say you don't have a kid in your life who you'd like to give a calendar to, you can donate one to a public school classroom where teachers are applying for free, literally free, not even shipping, calendars for their classrooms. So don't hesitate, be sure to check out beautyinthebolt.com slash calendar, and I will link that down in the description below to buy a calendar for either yourself or for a classroom.